All right, I think I'm live and I'm right on time. It's 2 p.m., so let's get this going. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie of So Hungry Hippie, and I'm just going to show you really quick how to make a useful project. I call these um, plastic bag corrals, <laughs> and then my kids said, Mom, what is a corral? So I don't know how we missed that in school, but anyways, they're just plastic bag holders. And with the elastic, it allows for those bags to stay put inside because if you just throw them in a tote, a lot of times with wind gusts and whatever, they'll just fly right, right out and then you have a mess. So I like to make them with elastic at the top and elastic at the bottom. But if you're running short on elastic, it will work with just elastic at the bottom. And it doesn't matter what kind of elastic, if you have one inch or if you have quarter inch, if you have half an inch, all of that is gonna work just fine. You can adjust the fabric to meet your needs. So let's get to the technical part. All you need is a piece of fabric and it's 19 inches by 22 inches tall. And you can play with that a little bit. If you want a smaller one, it's definitely okay. Hi, oh yay, I'm seeing comments. Hi, Anita, hi, Ramona. Nice to have you here. I hope you're staying, staying cool there in Nevada. Um, all right, and then for the hanging loop, as you can see, one I did with fabric and one I did with bias tape. So I, I have lots of packages of the rights, you know, binding, whatever you want to call it, bias tape. And a lot of times when I'm just in the mood for something really fast, I just use this for um, handles or for whatever reason. And you would just sew down the open edge to close it. And then I like to sew on the other side to make it balanced. And that could be your hanging loop. But I'm going to show you with fabric because I, I don't know about you, but I like busting my stash. <laughs> I like to be able to use up my fabric so I can buy more, right? Okay, so cut your piece of fabric 19 inches wide by 22 tall, and let's get ironing. I don't find that I need to interface this. It's just fine without interfacing. If you wanted to interface it, it's fine too. There's no right or wrong here. But let's just use minimal materials. So along the long edge, we're gonna fold it in a quarter of an inch. Hi, hi Susan from Illinois. I'm from Illinois originally, now I live in Wisconsin. But I am from Freeport, Illinois. Don't know if you've heard of it. It's kind of by Rockford. Hi Tina from New Hampshire. And Lisa, hi Lisa, <laughs> hi friend. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Okay. So this just encloses those raw edges, and we're gonna do that on both long sides. So I'm gonna come over here to my Janome. I have a Skyline S7, and I just got it on a normal stitch length. Oops, which is, for me, it's gonna be three. I, I like to sew in with a three. It looks like my Somebody came in here and unplugged my pedal. Naughty. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew that down here. And I'm just using a all-purpose thread. I happen to have Guterman all-purpose white in here and it works great. It's nice and strong. Any kind of thread is gonna work. And I'll speed this up a little bit for you. Maybe I should swing the camera over. Would that make you um, dizzy? I can totally swing this camera. Let's try it. If you get dizzy easily or don't like roller coasters, hide your eyes for a second. Let's try this. Oh, don't freeze on me. Ta-da! It's a little bright. I don't know how to shut off that light. I should probably call Janome and say, how do I shut off my light? But then I might not be able to see. <laughs> okay, so I've sewn down that edge and it 
just encloses it really nicely, nice clean edge. And we're gonna do that to the other long side. So I'll bring it over here, although now I'm in the way, aren't I? I'm gonna swing it back around just for a second because you all know what I'm doing now. Okay, so I've got this wool pressing mat and the Elisa iron. I'm just pressing that raw edge in. And then I'm gonna turn it again and press it again. Now this is like kind of ultra, you know, anal, I guess. I don't, I don't, I need a better word than that. That's terrible. But it's just so my raw edges are not sticking out later because I don't envision washing this a bunch, but I want the option to be able to in case, you know, in case I need to. So I like to enclose all those edges. So it's just a repeat. Okay, that side is done. You don't have to back stitch because we're gonna enclose the top and bottom edges as well. Oh, hi, hi everybody, hi Kara. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too. Thanks for stopping in. I love doing these lives because, <laughs> you know, you'll see the real me. Like if there's a mistake, it's, you know, it's the way it is. Hopefully not. Okay, so we're doing the same thing kind of to the top and bottom edges. You're gonna turn it over to that wrong side a quarter of an inch again, but our next fold is gonna be a little bigger. And this fold will depend on the width of your elastic. So on my very first one, I had three quarters inch elastic. So I had to make my casing at least three quarters and honestly a smidge bigger. But I have got this humongous spool of quarter inch elastic from all the mask making, right? So I'm gonna use this and it's fine. And like I said, any size will work. Just make sure your elastic fits in your casing. So I'm gonna fold mine over about a half an inch. Well, there we go. About a half an inch from my casing, maybe that's a little bigger. Bigger's fine, smaller's not fine. <laughs> And I don't think I'm going to pin it, but you certainly can. And I'm just going to sew down this long edge and that will create a casing for my elastic. So I'll take it back over. This one I will backstitch. This area can get some wear with the pushing in of the plastic bags and whatnot. How's everybody doing? <laughs> I hope everyone's staying cool. I put on a quick cardigan because I have a tank top on one of our trees. We had a big storm and one of our trees was just almost split down the middle. So I'm out there cleaning that up today. And I'm gonna back stitch a little. Okay, and there's that end. And you've probably guessed it, we're doing that to the other end. Whether or not you're putting elastic in at the top or not, still do this step for, for both of the shorter sides as well. Oh, so Susan is telling me I have to go into my settings. Let me bring this up. Susan, do you know how many times I've Googled this? Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I will do that. I won't do it right now because it'll take me forever to find it, but I will definitely do that. Thank you for the knowledge. Yay, I'm so happy to see everybody here. Flo from New Zealand. Wow. What time is it for you, Flo? Maybe it's the next day. PJ, I think I am sewing the item that I'm sewing. I don't know what you mean. Yes, I bet it's hot, Marsha. Holy cow. Okay, so right here. Oh, maybe you mean um, 
The items I'm sewing are these. I said that in the beginning if you didn't catch it. It's a plastic bag holder or plastic bag corral. And I'm just sewing that edge down. So now it's kind of like a giant napkin. You know, you've got all those raw edges folded in and sewn. And now we can proceed with the bag. What I like to do, and I'm silly, oh my gosh. Normally, you don't want to, oh, no, I did it right. Oh, see, I'm, I'm nervous. You want about 10 inches of elastic. Um, I don't know. Some people have told me that their elastic is super, super tight. And so you just, you're going to have to kind of gauge this. But for me, for my three quarters inch, for my half inch, and for my quarter inch elastic, I've used about 10 inches length of elastic for the top and bottom edges. So I'm just going to get my little measuring tape out. And I'm going to cut a 10 inch length twice. So there's one and there's two. And it doesn't have to be super precise. This is just what I have found works for me as far as tucking in those plastic bags. So before we put the bag all together, we want to put our elastic in. So I put it on a safety pin like this. This is what works for me, a nice giant safety pin. And I just thread it through. Now, what I like to do is sew that edge before, I always stick a pin here because sometimes I'm like real rammy and I just pull it all the way through and I have to do it again. So I'm pulling it through here. The pin will stop it on the edge before it comes through. You can see how this gathers nicely. Now I'm gonna sew this down and then trim that excess elastic away. So, I guess I should put a pin there just so I don't lose it. I'll take off my safety pin so I don't sew over it. And let's sew that down. I go back and forth a couple of times. If you want to, you can use a zigzag stitch. It's really up to you. It gets sewn again in the seam when we put the bag together. So you don't have to go too crazy. I'm going to sew down the other side now. Okay. So now that edge is finished. You see that? And we'll just repeat for the other side. Hi, Kathleen. Nice to see you here. Okay, so I've got this. I should probably cycle through these. <laughs> Kara, do you find it easier to sew standing or sitting? I think it's easier to sew sitting for me personally, but my setup in this room, I have to stand. So I think it probably makes me a little more nervous when I'm sewing live, but it is what it is. I just have to make do. Um, most of the time I'm sitting though. But my desk, this table, it goes up and down. So, you know, sometimes you're sewing a long time and you're tired of sitting, that happens to me. And so I'll just raise it up and sew standing for a while. I like it. I have some friends that sew standing all the time and I think that's amazing. I, it's just, it's not how I learned and I just don't like it as much. <laughs> Okay, so that is almost done. What other questions do you have while I'm doing this easy part here? Well, it's all easy, actually. Hi, hi, Sharon. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Kathleen. I love hanging out with sewing people. I, <laughs> I tell my friends all the time, oh, you don't know what you're missing. Like, sewing people are the best people. <laughs> I know I'm biased. <gasps> I'm biased. Okay, I'm just going to trim off those 
extra elastics there on the edges. So now we've got this piece. It looks like this. And as you guessed it, we're going to fold it right sides together and sew that, ed that long edge down. Now I have, at this point, I have sewn on my loop. However, I prefer to not do that. I prefer to sew the loop on as the last step. So you do you, whatever's most comfortable, but I like to make sure that it's like balanced correctly. And sometimes when I would put it on before this step, it would be off a little bit. Not that that should bother me, big deal, but just saying. <laughs> yes, totally, you can use your serger. I've done a couple, not more than a couple of bags like this with a serger, super, super fast, so awesome. I just know a lot of people don't have sergers or overlockers, so I wanted to show a sewing machine way. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, Christine. I was wondering if Canada was any cooler than we are right now. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Candy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sure it's been done a hundred million times. And um, I love it when I can improve on something. That's the goal always, right? And I can't believe it, but we're almost finished with this. We'll make the handle out of fabric and then we're pretty much done. You can see how when you get sewing these, you just get so fast. I think they would be good gifts at, um, or good ideas for craft shows like during the holidays because I know that a lot of my friends sell those um, microwave bowl cozy things and pot holders and other useful household items. I think this would be great, but you'd have to have it stuffed so people know what it is, you know, that kind of thing. Or even by the cash register if you have a shop and you just whip one out for the order. <laughs> I think it'd be so good. It gets a little bit thicker down there at the two elastics, but the Janome sews fine right over it. So there we go. Trim all the threads. I don't know about you, but I love a project that A, is simple and easy, but yet very useful, like super useful. Not something where you think, oh, that's so cute, but I'll never use it. I mean, ugh, I want to be able to use things, right? So now I just flip it right side out. Oh, let me get to these. Sorry. Yes, Kim, you wouldn't believe it. I planted that tree four years ago, and it just grew beautifully right outside my bedroom window. And the other night I was just, like, reminiscing about how grateful I was for it. And then the next day the storm, like, split it in half. What a bum. Bummer. Kathleen. Oh, that's so fun. Yes, always time for a cup of, cup of tea, cup of coffee, whatever. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, you're hot in Toronto. Oh, that's not right. It shouldn't be, right? Oh, Debbie. Debbie comes to all my sewing lives. I'm so grateful for you, Debbie. <laughs> Okay, so we're on the last step. This is the handle. And like I said, you can always do the prepackaged, you know, this is right uh, bias tape or binding tape, whatever you want to call it, and just cut your length and make your loop. But I want to show you how to use up more fabric since that's often the goal because the other goal is to be able to buy more fabric, right? So let's make this just like quilt binding. So my strap is four inches by 19 inches. My pug hears the postman most likely in case you hear barking. That's Tori. And then I'm going to open it up and you guessed it. Bring the edges in to meet in the middle. 
and press again. There we are. And here's this side. And press that. And then we fold this over again. And then you probably know what's next. We're going to sew down both long edges. So I sew down the open edge first, all the way down, and then I'll sew down this edge. And that just makes it look balanced and like a, a regular strap. I like that. If you're in a real hurry, just close the open edge and carry on. I'm, I'm making sure not to pull the fabric. I'm not, I'm letting the feed dogs do everything. A lot of times when you work with lengths, it's easy to like subconsciously kind of tug or pull on the fabric and then you'll end up like this. <laughs> well, not you, the fabric will. So there's one side. Now a trick I've learned over the years is to just give it another quick press in between the sides, sewing the sides. So now I'm gonna do the other side. I just had this machine service and it's it feels like butter, you know, like I'm just sewing it's so smooth. And there we are. And there's the strap. So because I'm me, I'm just going to trim off those ends and the threads to make it nice and clean and sharp. And then attach to whichever side that I want to be front. So there is one seam, and I envision that as sitting against the wall. So this is going to be how it'll be on my hooks in my kitchen. So I'm going to mark my sides as where I attach my strap because I have like those old fashioned big metal hooks on my wall. I don't know if that sounds dangerous, but they're not. <laughs> my house was built in um, 1910. So it has a lot of those old woodwork, you know, wall and Majiggies. And I try to keep the feel, you know, old slash Victorian slash whatever. So this is how it works for me. What I'm saying with all that chat is that you do your handle how it works for you. You may want it shorter. I'm looking at this and I and I'm thinking, well, that's that's a little long. I think my others are a little bit shorter. So I'll just put it further down in there and sew it shorter. And I just sew right through the elastic. I just, sometimes I do an X, sometimes I just go across the top. This doesn't get super heavy weighed down because plastic bags weigh nothing. So it's okay whatever way you want to do it. I shall do it across the top this time. And I go, I go, let me slow this down. I go one pass over, and then I'm going to reverse. Well, that's a little too slow. There we go. Do you remember when you first started sewing and how the machine felt like it was going so fast? I just remember that really well, feeling so overwhelmed by the speed. And now I'm thinking, oh, speed up, machine, speed up. Oops. I already cut it. Okay, so there's that. And I will answer questions in one second. Let me just make sure I've got my pin out. And I'm sewing this down. And I'm going to reverse. And there it is. It's done. And you can trim the excess strap away if you want, or you can just leave it. 
And I, I think this is just a fun way of using, you know, this was on the back of a quilt. So I trimmed the quilt, you know how you do, you trim your batting and the backing and all that down to your quilt. And this was left over. So I thought, well, that's a large enough piece to make one of these things. So you don't have to cut into your precious stash. You can always just upcycle or reuse. So let me get to some of these. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. I love using the bias tape on so many things. I'm going to do a bunting project on Friday, and I, I use the bias tape to hold my bunting flags in there. I love it. Can you share your thoughts on the Aliso? I need a new iron. I have had a lot of different irons, but the Aliso I've been using for about four years now, and I love them. I have one up here, and then I bought another one to have downstairs because I have a different sewing area. And then um, I also use the Mini, which is the you know small version, because for bag making, I make a lot of bags. And I find that one super useful to get inside the bag and iron that can make a big difference in the results. So yeah, I really like it. I really like the Aliso, I, I do recommend. And I hardly ever use steam, so I can't speak to that. I, I don't think, actually, I don't think I ever use steam. <laughs> Unless I'm shuring, I guess I have used it a few times. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We're all summer. Yeah, I know, right? You become like that with sewing machines. Um, like, like anything, the more you do it, the more you use something, the more comfortable it becomes, and you like it more and more and more. So, yeah, definitely. My machine is quiet. Yeah, this Chinomi is my quietest machine by far. It's, it's great. I can use this late at night when my kids go to bed and nobody is bothered. <laughs> I love it for that. I love it, love it. So, and I said it earlier, but I, this is the Skyline um, S7 model. I know there's an S9 out now. I was looking at that at the Chinomi store. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so. Oh, well, maybe that should be another Janome Live. <laughs> I'll ask him about that. That's a good idea. Yeah, I love useful projects, so keep the ideas coming, and I'm happy to do it. Her name is Edna. Do you guys name your sewing machines? Because I have not, but that's a great name. I love that name, so I'm going to have to do that, I think. All right, well, I've had you here for 28 minutes, and... Let me know if you have any more questions before I sign off and you can go get busy making your own bag holder. I think I am going to trim this. If you wanted to, you could always trim it with enough space and fold, fold that raw strap edge under and then sew it. That's getting really, really nice and fancy, but I'm not going to because if I do end up washing this, that'll be on the inside anyways. So let me put a couple of bags in here. I have all kinds of these bags. You know, with COVID, before COVID, they were getting rid of plastic bags in my town. And then when it hit, they're like, oh, never mind. We have to have a way to have you guys take home your stuff and something disposable. So that's why I have them again. But yeah, it works. And I'm going to stuff it up. It'll look better once it's filled. But thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys. And have fun sewing. And I will see you soon. Say hi on Instagram. I'm so hungry, hippie. I'd love to see you, meet you, follow you back. All right. Have fun. See you soon.